I have seven hours to catch five bass that weigh 12 pounds on a body of water I haven't seen in years. Can I figure out these summertime bass or will the heat get to me? I guess we'll find out. This is Lake Break, a video series devoted to the number one question that I get. How do you find bass on a new body of water? I don't get help, I don't get information, I just put the boat in and go. Today we are here fishing Portage Lakes. It is actually a chain of lakes. I think there's six or seven different lakes. A lot of this is pretty much idle only, but there are a few places where you can run the big motor. But we have a lot of grass in this system, a lot of milfoil, coontail. And as you can see, we have a lot of cheese mats, which might be good for a little frog action later on in the day. But just gonna spend some time covering some water with a buzz bait and see if we can't pick up a couple clues, figure out what the bass are doing. See how the bubbles are disappearing real quick? That means that it's a higher pressure system. That's apparently what they, they say. I don't know who they is, but. Now, one thing that I noticed when I was fishing this scum was that there was a lot of milfoil grass out in the middle of this section of the lake. Milfoil, in my opinion, is one of the best types of grass for bass and bass absolutely love to get in it. However, after I panned around with my mega live unit, I could tell that this grass was absolutely everywhere. And so one thing you wanna do when you fish a grass situation like this is try to find some sort of hard edge or some sort of point or some sort of pocket in the grass. Now, after fishing this scum without any bites for about 30 minutes, I decided I wanted to explore this milfoil grass a little bit more. Now, looking at the map, this deeper section of the lake over here looked really good to me. And if there's milfoil on this bank, more than likely there's going to be a hard edge where this milfoil stops. And that is the exact type of place that I really wanted to find. Those really hard edges can really just concentrate the bass and make them easy to find within all this grass. So I headed over to this lake and I started idling around. Now, one of the first things that I noticed within about about five minutes of idling was a bluegill bed. Now, I didn't know if this was an old bed or an active bed, but sometimes the biggest bass in your lake that are shallow will hang around these bluegill beds. So I marked up this bed and I continued to idle. And not only did I find this one bed, but I also ended up finding about five or six other bluegill beds. So my plan was to idle through this area, spin around, and then fish all these bluegill beds at once. A lot of times those bass will just hang like if for example here there's grass around the edges of that bed so they'll just hang in that in the grass right around the edge and then they'll just decide whenever they want to go out and pick up a bluegill or hopefully a big worm like i'm throwing but i'm not getting a lot of pecks right now so i don't know if it's an active bed a lot of times if if you bring a worm through an active bed a bl active bluegill bed you're going to get a lot of pecks on your plastics or whatever you're throwing kind of let you know they're down there so it might be an empty bed there might still be bass around it because they'll still check them out every now and then because they don't always know when the bluegill are going to be there but make a few casts and if we don't get any bites we'll move on to the next one Now, after fishing all these bluegill beds for about an hour and not even getting a bite, I was starting to get a little discouraged. I really thought that this might yield a big bite for me, but that is just bass fishing. So I sat down and I looked at my map and I noticed that close to where I was, there was a small point that extended out into deep water. Again, I thought to myself that this might be a good place where there is a hard break in that grass line. So I immediately idled over to this point and honestly, I got a little bit excited because it was exactly what I was looking for. There was a very defined edge in this grass and the grass was extremely tall. A lot of times with this milfoil grass, if you can find it where it's topped out in 8, 10, 12 foot of water, it can be some of the best grass that holds big groups of fish. So I idled back and forth over this point and I marked the edge with a couple of waypoints and decided that I would spin back around and fish through this area. Okay. 
Uh oh. Hey. Gosh, I thought that was gonna be a big one. I still like it. This is the start of something. It's the start of something. That's probably a 12 inch keeper. That's all they need to be on this lake. So that might be number one anyways. Man, he really, really thought he was gonna be big the way he pulled back. Let's make sure he's 12. Oh yeah, 12 and a half. Our first keeper of the day, we are about two hours in. And we got the first one, he's not big, maybe a, a one pounder. That fish weighs, he came in at 1.01, 1, 1. 1. 1.01, just a one pounder. All right, let's start, let's go. Let's go, let's go. He was on the very point of this grass area that we just went over and marked. There's another one. A little bit better. All right, let's go. I was telling you all morning, once we get one bite, sometimes you can catch a bunch. So I'm hoping there's a bunch right here. That one's a little bit better. Still not a, we really want to catch three pounders, but he's a little skinny. Pound and a halfer. Gosh, I love that bite so much. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. 1.71. One point seven one. Kind of a kind of a beat up one, a little bit ugly, but there might there might be a whole school right here. Let's find out. Now, something that you don't know is I actually tried to film this video the day before I actually ended up filming it. It was rainy and nasty, and although I don't mind fishing in the rain, I do not like filming in the rain. So I ended up spending that day organizing my boat and tackle, but I'm going to be honest with you, I got a little distracted by a fishing game that a buddy had sent to me called Fishing Clash. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you, I've never been that much of a gamer in my life. I don't own a PlayStation. I don't own an Xbox, but this particular game actually distracted me for about an hour of that day. I know for me, one of the places I have always wanted to fish is the Amazon River. The nice thing is you don't have to wait long to get bit here in the Amazon. <laughs> it happens pretty quick. This one's pulling. Yes! Red tail catfish, baby. I've always wanted to catch one of those. Something I really enjoyed about Fishing Clash is you can actually fish some of the bigger lakes in the nation. Lakes like Lake Gunnersville, which are huge bass fishing fisheries. Not only that, but you can also do some saltwater fishing and fish pretty much anywhere around the world in this game. The other thing that I also really enjoyed about it is that you can compete against other guys. You guys know that I like tournament fishing, so I am a very competitive by nature, and I like being able to compete not only against my friends and family, but people around the world. Now, one of the best ways to actually do well in this game and to win over others is by upgrading your lures and your tackle that you are using. Now, right off the bat, if you use my gift code, which is catch more bass, you will actually be able to upgrade some of your tackle and be able to start doing better and catching bigger fish in the game. To me, this game kind of reminds me of that old arcade fishing game. It was the only one that I ever played except for this has a lot better graphics. To claim your gift code, simply click on this blue hamburger dial in the top right hand corner of the screen, then hit on gift codes and then enter in catch more bass. Again, there's a link down below in the description or scan the QR code now. missed him Was he, not pulling? he pulled he didn't he kind of pecked at it so it may have been a small fish but 
the other one's definitely pulled down a little harder. Oh, there he is again. Got it. This. Okay. I'm gonna hit a waypoint quick. I don't know if that was the same fish. It may have been a different one. He hit it. If that was him, he hit it the same both times. He just kind of peck, peck, peck at it. Still not what we're looking for, but we kind of got us a little bit of a pattern started. Right up there where we caught those two fish in a row it was it was more or less a point in the grass that dropped into kind of a deeper water and this is kind of the same thing we kind of went through a small depression saddle and then we came to another one of those points that fish weighs 1.58 158 skinny fish but maybe there's another couple with them let's find out so what we got here is a pretty standard Texas rig. Uh, this is just a uh, Berkeley Pit Boss, just straight green pumpkin on this. I got a four out trocar flipping hook and a three eighths ounce weight that's actually pegged. As you can see, the weight can't go anywhere, which is what I like to do a lot in grass. And then my setup is basically, it's actually I'm fishing braid to fluorocarbon line on this. I really like it in this situation because then you're when you're constantly flipping like this all day long, if you're using a really big rod it just can kind of get tiresome in your hand so having this smaller rod with braid to that leader it's just it's very easy on the wrist very easy on the line and or very easy on your your uh just body so that's what i love to do so that's the, that's the setup pretty simple i'm just kind of pitching out into where these right on the outside of these grass lines is is where these fish have all been so hopefully we can find a couple of schools um I'm going to keep running this pattern. We're going to have to go try to find some more areas like this. Um, but I think we're going to hit that one little area where there might be better than average ones. Those two, three, four pounders instead of just the pound and a halfers. So, A big thing that you'll notice is that every time that I am catching bass, typically I'm catching little wolf packs. I would stumble upon two fish here, two fish there. That is really something that happens often when you're fishing grass. You will go for hours without catching bass, but then you will stumble upon small schools within the grass. Don't know that that's a keeper. It's supposed to be going up in size, not down in size. I'm gonna hit my waypoint real quick. I don't think that that's 12 inches, but maybe he is. He's kind of long. Nope. About 11 and three quarter. Little tiny guy. Thanks, buddy. You're fun. They're all fun, even when they're small. They're just more fun when they're big. Oh, there's another one. About the same size. That one's a keeper at least. Look like he got eaten by a bird. Look at that. Ugh. That's nasty. <laughs> hey. Five fish in the last hour after we went two hours without a fish, so I think this will be number four, definitely 12. We just got to find us some bigger ones. At least we're getting bit. He is 1.10. Got to get bigger ones. Got a lot of upgrading to do. But we're getting bit. We're putting something together. Look at that. Look at across the back. It's like a bird came and tried to, you know? Remember when we were at West Harbor and we saw a, a, a blue heron with a bass about that big? Maybe he got away. Oh. Oh. 
Um, I think I just got a lot of salad with that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> I lost my rod. A lot of salads. Not much meat. It's the kind of dinner you don't like. At least I don't like. Little guy. Not a keeper. That's what they're hanging in though. That's that milfoil grass. The green stuff, you can see this stuff over here is kind of dead looking. But this green stuff is the stuff you really want to find where it's really crispy green. Some good stuff. Oh gosh, that is a fish. <laughs> that, fish, that fish had that bait for like 10 minutes. He had it for so long, I thought it was in the grass. This must be a girl because she's got some lipstick. The old lipstick. All right, that's number five. It's our fifth keeper. And she weighs 1.65, which means we have a five bass limit right now for 7.07 .07 pounds. So we got a long way to go, but hey, we're catching fish. That was crazy. I can't believe that fish held it for that long. See you, buddy. Now, after fishing through this area and catching several fish, I decided I would look at this small drop that was really close to this point. If there's good grass growing in the area, then more than likely there might be another hard edge right over here. And so I moved my boat over there, and this time I didn't idle over the grass. I simply dropped my trolling motor in, looked at the grass with my Mega Live, and noticed that there was a good hard edge. So I decided to pick up my bait again and start flipping. There he is. Little. Little. That's just the, the uh, importance of that mapping though. Cause I just jumped down and, and switched up my colors. My color shading on my mapping. Saw where my red touched the green. Came right over there to it, caught a fish. Not gonna help us. I mean, he might, but not by a lot. Fun fish though. Whoa! Oh. oh man. Just all the same size. Pound, pound and a half. It might help us a little bit, but. I was about to say we're kind of coming up on a little bit of a point in the grass. Felt like we were going to get bit. And we did. Small bass is 1.01. .01. He might be a 120 something. It's kind of skinny. No, 1.14. Helps us, but not by much. Thanks, buddy. Whoop. There's one. Didn't get a good hook in him. It's a little bit better one there. we go okay a little bit better one there 
least in the two pound range but we just saw a, a bigger fish chase a a shad out of the water man they are they are all so long and skinny you know but he uh i'm hoping we get into a little section of them right here all right so small fish is a 1.10 this should give us that's a 227 227 which kicks us up to 837 mm. thanks buddy long and lean now after fishing through this area and catching several fish i sat down and i looked at my topographical map and i wanted to find an area that set up similarly to what i had found in this particular lake now looking at the map this very top lake over here was similar in nature it had some pretty deep water as well as some points and some good hard edges that were close to that deep water so i decided to make my way up to that lake to try to see if i could find another group of fish in a grass line now on the way to this lake we went through this really clear canal and i couldn't help but pick up a glide bait to see if i couldn't draw any big bass out or catch any big bass Look at it. After getting skunked in the canal, I decided to move to this lake and I first wanted to hit a couple of these points that dropped into deep water to see if the grass set up similarly to that first place we caught them. I don't know, I might make a couple of pitches. It's a little, see, remember I was talking about that slime? And it gets a little slime. It gets a little slimy it seems like they don't always like to get in it so why that grass looks a little bit weird this is called eladia right here i didn't know it was in this lake it's like a northern hydrilla it's a different type of grass but the thing about it is that it grows differently it grows more uh thick sometimes the bass can't get inside of it as well they'll still relate to it on the outsides but which might be why this grass is the way that it is if that's what the bulk of it is. I'm definitely seeing strands of milfoil, which is what I like. I immediately noticed that the grass in this lake was just different. And to be honest, it was a little bit slimy and it was just different in general. It grew different. It wasn't that really good, clean milfoil like we had fished in the original lake. Now, although I immediately noticed this, I decided to still spend some time fishing in this area. I still found some grass in this area that was a mixture of elodia and milfoil, and it grew 12 foot tall in some areas and looked okay, but I just could not get bit anywhere I went in this lake. So with about an hour and a half to go, I decided to head back down to that grass line that we originally fished to see if I couldn't pick up a few more fish and hit my weight. By the time I got back down to the lake, I had about 45 minutes to fish and decided to just spend that time working over all the areas that we had already fished. I thought maybe I could pick up another one or two bigger fish that really made a difference. Last flip. Well, although I did not hit my goal in this video, I truly had a fun time kind of figuring out how to catch bass. And I feel like if I had just had a little bit more time, I may have found a couple of those right stretches that had the right 
quality fish in it. I felt good about the pattern that I had found. Now, before I let you guys go, one of the best ways to help support this channel is by supporting the companies that support this channel. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna leave a link for Fishing Clash the game. You can also click on this QR code if you wanna download it. It's free, it's fun, and I think you will enjoy it if you love to fish. Don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.